This video contains flashing lights, disturbing content, violent and graphic images, jump scares, pop-ups and sudden loud noises. Viewer discretion advised. Let's go! Alright, let's roll out. I'll speak for myself. If I have to crack some skulls, I will. I'd rather not. You are a spineless worm. You are a mistake of nature. You are walking vomit. <sighs> One, two. Ah! Shit. Humans talk too much. Down and give me 20. Kidding. Kidding. Everyone loves a good scare now and then. Horror games have become increasingly popular after the past few years as graphics and visuals have become more realistic. There are hundreds of great games that'll give you a good jump, but these specific ones give you frights from start to finish. So go grab yourself a snack, turn down the lights, pull the blankets close, ramp up the volume, and let's start off this top 80 scary horror games. The Lurking Horror The Lurking Horror is a great example of the lost star of the text adventure. Using nothing but text, the game managed to suck players into its brilliantly imagined world. Playing Lurking the Horror was like reading a great Stephen King novel, or HP Lovecraft story, except the experience was completely under the player's control. If you wanted to take a closer look at things, you could. Uninvited Uninvited was probably the only game from the NES era that was considerably scary. Being a point-and-click game, it's not in real time, so it misses that quick unexpected scare factor. It does have that element of apprehension before you're about to open the door or confront a ghost. The danger and death tunes, even for its time, fit the event perfectly and gives it a lot of tension. Pick up the wrong choice and you're presented to a disturbing close-up of the thing that kills you. Blood. It's derivative, it's violent, and definitely scary at times, but it's almost always fun. If you like first-person shooters, you're gonna want to add blood to your collection. In fact, the biggest problem is that the game is just too damn hard. You've never seen enemies deliver so much damage as quickly as in blood, and that's what makes the game quite frightening, as players are on their last ditch of health, trying to find some, any resources, while they're being chased by bigger foes. The sound of this game is also worth a mention, creating some haunting ambience and absolutely terrifying enemy sounds. Project Firestar 3D Project Firestar 3D is a remake of the original game on the Commodore 64, retaining the same ship layout, objectives, and events. The one major difference is that the 2D side-scrolling view has been replaced with the first-person 3D. Painkiller. Painkiller is an award-winning first-person horror shooter designed to satisfy a gamer's hunger for intense, fast-paced action and guts. It's an adrenaline addict's nightmare where hellish monsters swarm in seemingly endless mobs. The axe-wielding monks are very sinister and the soldiers in gas masks are scary enough to cause nightmares. When you battle larger foes, these enemies dwarf your character and scream making you feel very insignificant. The level design also holds merit, creating some very dark, dreary places. From asylums, to orphanages, to even the depths of hell itself. Seventh Guest Imaginative and Scary Seventh Guest is one of a kind in those early days of suspense gaming. The atmosphere was indeed creepy and the game has a tendency to uphold that for a very long time during your playthrough. Of course you can't compare the game to what we have nowadays. With clever imagery, there are possibilities that a puzzle would freak you out. The 
the corridor. Players wake up from a sense of unexplained anxiety, leave their room and find themselves in a dark, long hallway. The hotel slowly turns into an endless maze of walls that forebode something sinister. While the game itself does provide some spooky atmosphere, there are sadly not enough real and scares to truly class this game right up there high on the list. The Path The Path is a short horror game inspired by older versions of Little Red Riding Hood, set in modern day. The Path offers an atmospheric experience of exploration and discovery through a unique form of gameplay. You can choose from one of six sisters at the start of the game, and you're given a clear instruction to visit Grandma's house and to stay on the path. Ultimately, though, you're on your own, and what you discover and learn is in your own hands. Some may find this game to be a work of art, while others may find it tiresome and repetitive. It all depends on the sort of experience that you have. Phantasmagoria. It seemed like a dream come true for Adrienne Delaney and her husband Donald Gordon, a beautiful estate on its own private island and the perfect place to build a life together. But an ominous presence lurks within the walls, the rooms, and every passageway of their mysterious home. The previous owner, a 19th century master illusionist, left behind a twisted trail of terror, and now Adrienne must uncover the clues and gather the objects necessary to save her husband from a great evil. Scratches. Scratches is a terrifying game where a story from the past emerges to haunt the present. You control the famed horror writer Michael Arthray as he explores Blackwood Manor, a Victorian house near an English market town. It's a quiet and pleasant house, until odd noises in the basement keep him up at night. As they grow louder, you explore the house and unlock the strange tales that echo through its walls. The atmosphere is the strongest part of this game, and the creepiness can be pretty extreme at times. Alone in the Dark The original Alone in the Dark may not be very scary by modern standards, but deserves a great deal of credit for helping to blaze the trail both for atmospheric tension and for the genre of games that would become known as survival horror. Alone in the Dark is the first such game to use fixed camera angles for each room along with 3D graphics. It takes place in a very spooky mansion in which the main character, Edward Carnby, must navigate the dreaded place and survive the attacks of deadly monsters that lurk just around the next corner. Free Ice Cream Free Ice Cream is a freeware flash adventure game that is at the same time motivating and extremely disturbing. Two young girls, Lily and an unnamed girl, are attracted to the promise of free ice cream and are kidnapped by a crazy and frightening chef. Now the player has to help the young girl in the red dress to escape a horrible fate. Deadly Premonition this is a game that does some things brilliantly right, and others terribly wrong. Yet it somehow manages to be a game that is simply like no other. If you can't overlook a game's flaws to have an enjoyable experience, then this is not for you, because, being honest here, this game is terribly flawed. However, it does offer a Resident Evil-style combat system in which you battle zombie-like creatures in a very nightmarish world. Deadly Premonition, while it may not be for everyone, is still nevertheless a very fun horror game. Forget Me Not Annie Forget Me Not Annie is a first-person psychological horror game created with the Unreal Engine that revolves around puzzle solving and platforming. In this game, players take on the role of Annie, a girl who is locked in her own mind, whose only friend is Howard a grotesque and oversized teddy bear. Forget Me Not Annie lets you explore 3D environments and interact with objects in a special way, which is by using Annie's telekinetic powers. Players use Annie's powers to solve various puzzles that advance you forward in the game. To do this, you must also use Howard's skills. 
You pull objects towards them so they can make use of the new objects as well. The key to being successful in Forget-Me-Not Annie is to combine both Annie's and Howard's powers together. You are empty. Despite being a game particularly suited for the horror genre, you are empty's glitches and problems outweigh the game. Whether it's down to the player's speed or no music or confusing mechanics, you are empty just feels like that at times, empty. The game isn't that exciting to play, and its unnecessary high difficulty and confusing layout makes the game a quite rough experience. Soundwise, it's brilliant. With that said, if you're one of those players who doesn't really care about glitches or problems, or is just after another horror game to add to their collection, give this a try anyway. Curse, the Eye of Isis. If you want creepy jump scare cutscenes that blend into gameplay along with tense, worrying music that sends shivers down your spine, you might well enjoy the curse immensely. Granted, horror games are usually about solving bizarre puzzles and killing zombies, and Curse has exactly that. It's a decently fun, good old fashioned zombie shooting game with a strange supernatural occurrence. Inside. A pretty decent free indie game that has quite a few jump scares, this game uses Unity 3D Engine and requires you to scavenge an empty building looking for a key. Each corridor is dark, and more often than not, you'll be stalked by red mannequin looking people and a sinister demon. There are quite a number of jump scares and sudden noises to keep the player on their toes, but the ending is a little disappointing. Basically, if you're afraid of the dark, inside is the game for you. Area 51 Area 51 takes elements from other first-person shooter games, like the gameplay of Halo and the creepy environments of Doom 3, and thrusts you into the not-so-secret base where all hell is broken loose. The great-looking environments are also accompanied by a lot of ambient noise, which does a good job of adding to the creeps. Most of the enemies will attack from dark places or from behind, adding to the tension factor. Sanitarium Taking place in an insane asylum filled with crazed patients, Sanitarium puts you in the role of an amnesiac who must discover the truth about his identity and incarceration. Despite the cliched premise of the mysteries of this little known but much loved point and click adventure unravel into a rich psychological horror experience that fits between the ominous, gothic asylum bleak flashbacks from the protagonist's past and the nightmares, delusions of the troubled psyche. Cursed Mountain Cursed Mountain is a survival horror game for the Wii, where Eric summons a Scottish mountaineer searching for his brother lost in the Himalayas. The storyline for the game is mainly plotted on Buddhism and Tibetan and folklore. Unlike other horror games, this game gives you an open space to operate creating an essence of agoraphobia. The atmosphere and tension is laid thick on this game, and only a few shortcomings hold it back from greatness. Unfortunately, due to the poor sales, developer Deep Silver Vienna closed down shortly after the release of the game. Yumi Nikki Yumi Nikki is a freeware indie game for the PC that stars an open world dreamscape. This is a quality title that has a cult following and takes gaming in a different direction. There's no spoken line of dialogue through the entire game. It really is for those who enjoy exploring worlds who like cryptic and symbolic plots, surreal landscapes and trippy moments. This is a deeply atmospheric title with some of the most disturbing backdrops ever in a game. Anna. The game features three different endings, which are triggered according to your behavior in the game. Anna will provide you with different paths, environments, and puzzles according to the path you're walking, providing you with three different experiences, each one about being around three hours. The more you play the game, the more creepy and disturbing it gets. The game does, however, have some incredible graphics for an indie game, and upon its completion, will leave an imprint in your mind, long, long after you turn off the computer. I'll bleed. A famous media mogul has issued a challenge. He'll award one million dollars to anyone who can make it out of his latest horror theme park alive. You are Aiko, the young president of the local high school horrors club. 
Your mission is to rescue your free friends in the theme park and claim the reward. With the park staffed by slashers, zombies, demons, and other horror movie dissonance, you must use all your senses to escape death, whether it be by some horrible creature or by sheer fright. Dementium, the ward. The strength in this game is a terrific presentation and great sound design that actually enhances the sense of terror you'll get from playing it. Dementium is like a classic horror film that doesn't rely on cheap shocks for its scares. Instead, it creates an atmosphere of tense paranoia. Even your own heartbeat can be heard thumping throughout the game, and this makes things even more nerve-wracking, especially when you're running for your life, or when low on ammo. The White Chamber the White Chamber is a point-and-click horror adventure in which you play the part of an unnamed young woman who literally woke up in a coffin in a dark room. She has no idea how she got there, and you don't even know her name. For most of the game, the music is non-existent, leaving you to the ambience of computers and machines around you, piping up only when you drive the attention through the room. The music, when it plays, is actually pretty good. It pumps the atmosphere even more. Overall, this one is a creepy game. It will make you nervous, it will make you uncomfortable, and it will keep you coming back until you see a conclusion. If you're a fan of horror titles that actually are scary, pick this up. Don't hesitate. Amy. Amy delivers the scary atmosphere successfully with sounds that will give the player goosebumps. Unfortunately, due to technical bugs, sluggish controls, a huge amount of hype, and a big development in progress, the game was a massive disappointment and was immediately reviewed poorly by gaming critics. While the game may not appeal to everyone, there is still some shine behind this game, and if delved into deeply, some may find it's worth the purchase. Candles Candles is a free indie game that uses darkness and spooky sounds to keep you constantly on edge. Nasty imp creatures have taken over your house, and you need to move carefully around. Lighting candles is your only defense to scare them away. While doing this, you also have to start the electric generator to turn on all the lights permanently. Now it's up to you whether to keep lighting candles or find a way that leads to the electric generator. The game isn't perfect, and it's a little annoying to know that touching an imp will kill you instantly, so there's nothing left to do besides hitting the escape key and starting all over again. Haunting Ground Haunting Ground pairs down the survival horror experience to its most basic, frightening form. Running for your life when one of the game's persistent killers is hot on the trail of the defenseless protagonist, Fiona, the game descends into madness. Impressive panic effects distort the time, corrupt the visuals, and muddle your controls, making your playtime all the more disturbing. While critics flame the game on its confusing and downright stupid plot, play this one for yourself and see. Rule of Rose this suspenseful adventure game is set in a mysterious world that is under the control of a group of young girls, calling themselves the Red Crayon Family. Taking control of Jennifer, you'll have to work with the rules created by the girls as you solve puzzles, fight enemies, and attempt to free yourself from the dungeons. An eerie and controversial and super spooky overlooked PS2 title that all horror fans should definitely check out. Haunt. The experience of playing Haunt can be best summed up as going through a haunted house found at most traveling carnivals. The game takes place in a dark and eerily lit haunted house. Even though the graphics are kinda cartoony, it really radiates the ambience of a classic haunted mansion. The game will try to scare you in exactly the same way as found in those classic haunted attractions. In the game you'll find all types of stereotypical stuff like pipes that suddenly spray gas at you, trap doors that suddenly go flying open, and medieval armors that suddenly start moving. As there are so many objects in the beginning, you begin to believe that anything is possible, so your mind starts making you think that something is about to happen. This trick with paranoia makes this game absolutely terrifying. Darkness Within 
In classic Lovecraft fashion, the game begins in an insane asylum with your character looking back to how you got there. From the very beginning of the game, it has a somewhat dreamlike quality. When strange things begin to happen, it's difficult to know if you're witnessing an actual phenomenon or simply in the middle of another hallucination. The game does succeed in being scary at times, not the gruesome jump scares, but the lingering presence fear. Music is done right and gives the player something about to go down. Which, very cool and very unique visuals and an interesting background music make Witch one of the more scary games that you could be playing alone. It's a short horror adventure game about escaping from a house that you're trapped in. You'll endlessly be stalked by a headless figure that seems to teleport around the house, making the game very creepy at times, and more often than not, this jump scare with the sudden accompanying static effects is what causes this game to be absolutely terrifying. Rise of Nightmares Rise of Nightmares offers a spine-tingling horror experience which uses the innovative new controls of Kinect to give players the ultimate fright. Using their whole body, the player will experience fear and tension as never before in this first-person horror adventure. The game relies on using melee weapons and blocking attacks. Enemies can pounce on the player unexpectedly from corners, and the actual designs of the enemies are brutally visceral. Obscure. Leaf Form may look more like a rundown hospital or a mental asylum than a functioning high school, but it serves its spooky purpose nicely. Moving shadows add eerie possibilities to every corridor, giving you the impression that something's always about to leap from a nearby door or locker. That tense atmosphere is further enhanced with distant roars, banging noises that can't be explained, and a hair-raising music soundtrack featuring Latin chanting. In the end, Obscure lives up to its name. Even if it can't compete to the original classics. Parasite Eve. Parasite Eve is a horror game that is set out more to stun than scare. There aren't many genuinely scary moments, as you might find in any other horror games. The game, however, does have a very creepy atmosphere, and the monster designs are certainly something to behold. The game focuses more on the gory aspect of horror than that of the traditional jump scare. While an underrated gem, it is one game all should at least try. Calling Calling is a first-person survival horror game that follows four people who have been transported to this netherworld between the real world and the ghost world. The game offers different locations to explore, ranging from a dollhouse to, to even a school. Calling might be a decent game for those who are really forgiving, scare easy, or very young. The game itself is rather daunting after the first hour because of the controls and overall slow pace of the game. Ao Oni. Ao Oni plays pretty much like your standard Japanese horror adventure puzzle game, where you gather items, solve puzzles, find clues, and backtrack with keys. Now, what's different about this game, though, is that as you make your way through the mansion, you're constantly being stalked by the giant Ao Oni, which is Japanese for Purple Troll. In this simple addition, much like that found in Clock Tower, it makes Ao Oni one incredibly tense game to play. Bioshock Bioshock's City of Rapture makes a very strong first impression leaves a lasting one even after you finish playing the game. It's a beautiful modern utopia laid low by corruption and decay. You know something terrible can happen at any time. The mess and debris around you suggest that terrible things never stopped happening. While you explore the ruins of this decadent city, you constantly hear the eerie audio combination of obviously optimistic music bangs and ramblings of deranged citizens in the vicinity. The often decayed interiors and scenes of murder and violence will haunt you as you begin to piece together what really happened in this haunting and dead city.
Alan Wake. If there's one thing that Alan Wake did well, it was dropping players into extremely creepy environments. The woods of the Pacific Northwest are scary enough on their own, but add in a blanket of darkness, a smattering of fog, and a plethora of possessed homicidal woodsmen lurking around every corner, and you have a recipe for constant goosebumps. The clever use of shining a flashlight on enemies is a handy mechanic. It's even more unnerving when you find props and other vehicles come to life and start rushing towards the player. Cloud Tower Series. Before we say anything else, let's get this out of the way. The Clock Tower games are scary. Now the premise may sound silly, but believe me, this game will make you jump more often than you want. Across these games usually involves a disfigured mass murderer called the Scissor Man, who is on the loose, cutting up the citizens. You must piece together the clues to stop him. In all of the games, the basic premise was to run for your life from enemies and to solve some of the toughest puzzles since Mist. What's more is that the enemies can emerge at any time and any point in the game and chase the player down so players absolutely must find places to hide. The Lost Crown, a ghost hunting adventure. The Lost Crown is a scary and thrilling new adventure title inspired by classic ghost stories and today's modern ghost hunting techniques. The haunting scenes combined with night vision cameras, EVP, and other ghost hunting gadgets bring a frightening story to gamers. Players take on the role of Nigel Danvers, who travels to an eerie seaside town on England's east coast. There, they learn to use advanced techniques used by real paranormal investigators and to uncover an ancient mystery and treasure. Murder, mystery, and suspense await the braver and more talented gamers. It's a very simple game with very simple graphics. Basically, the game is all about finding five signs scattered across a map while avoiding being found. The more signs the player finds, the more difficult the game becomes. With each discovery of a new location, the pursuing forces will increase in both number and variety. The sound design in this game is also really creepy and very unnerving too. Hide is one of those games when it's not a good idea to go towards the light. Euthanasia. This is a free indie first person horror shooter game with ten full playable levels. You play as an ex soldier who lost his legs in a taxi accident and then is confined to a wheelchair. You're assigned to a mental hospital after trying to kill yourself and a compassionate doctor gives you a lethal injection. And after you die, the game begins. For the most part, the game takes place in a rundown hospital. It's atmospheric, dark, and scary. You always feel haunted like someone is watching you and you never know what lurks around the next corner. However, despite its sinister setting, there are some negative reception when it comes to the amount of bugs and glitches found in the game. Things such as invisible enemies and weapon pickups can be made can make the game less scary and more annoying. Cold Fear. Cold Fear is the familiar setup of players investigating a mysterious Russian boat and soon find out the ship is overrun with infected crew members and other nasty creatures. What's cool about this game is that it employs both old school Resident Evil's use of fixed camera angles and the new school Resident Evil's over the shoulder perspective, allowing players to switch between either on the fly. It also uses great scare tactics and the tension of not knowing what's going to happen each and every time you enter a room. This game is extremely underrated but well worth the time to play. Nesferatu, The Wrath of Malachi the game randomly generates a new map each time you play, and you have to kill vampires and other such demons. With a great atmosphere and some legit scares, and decent action. The game is way too short though, and the visuals are quite outdated, and the randomly generated maps aren't that good. However, there is some fun to be had here, indeed containing a few hours of entertainment. The House 2. 
The House 2 is the second and newest version of the internet flash game created by Synthii Studio. This game is a point and click adventure. House 2, like its predecessor, is more of an interactive story, with long periods of explorative clicking insp interspersed with moments of heart pounding terror. If you like the scary stuff, then by all means definitely play House 2 in the dark. Alone. With the sound up. <laughs> If, on the other hand, you don't like jump scares, then perhaps you should avoid this one. Cryostasis. Right from the get-go, cryostasis flaunts this atmosphere and goes the whole nine yards to try and scare you. It really does have the settings of survival horror fans are accustomed to. However, it lacks the jump-out-of-your-seat moments that others have in the genre. Cryostasis makes use of atmosphere, dialogue, sound effects, music, and some fantastic lighting to keep you on your toes. The game is very tense and creepy, but not filled with adrenaline. Cryostasis manages to be more of a psychological trip than most games, and it's a fantastic game to play through. Clive Barker's and dying. Whilst the game's protagonist explores his friend's estate in Ireland, he uncovers some terrifying supernatural creatures. An excellent mix of first-person shooting and spellcasting, Undying lets the player deal considerable amounts of damage to their enemies, but the absence of ammo, disturbing images, and gorgeous lighting effects make this hair-raising PC game one to play with the lights off. Undying carved out its own little niche on the PC as a true horror game involving gruesome monsters, haunted churches, and of course, cults. Eerie. Eerie ruthlessly drops players into a dark and terrifying sewer complex beneath the town of Michigan during the 1960s. With barely a minute to orient themselves, players find themselves trapped and being hunted with no option but seek escape. Using the Unreal Engine 3, the game's first-person perspective is truly mind-blowing. When you run from danger, the camera jumps and shakes, giving you the feeling that you're running, just like in real life. Paranormal Paranormal is a strange little game where the idea is to try and find as many notes about the hauntings of your house while ghostly and paranormal activities happen all around you. There is a time limit on the number of things you do each day as your battery life slowly diminishes. The game does have some rather decent graphics and a very good sound design, making you even more immersed in the game. This game is a very unique horror game and is definitely one to try out if you've never played it before. Gray. Gray requires Half-Life 2 Episode 2 to play. It's a psychological horror total conversion, full of both action and puzzles. The horror element in the game is very much present, with lots of disturbing images, shifting rooms, and creepy events. The only real scares in the game, however, are the jump scares, which are only present when enemies tend to scream loud in your face when you turn around the corner. Well, the game's atmosphere is fantastic, and the only negative criticism many people have of the game was its really dark rooms, the monsters being too strong, and health items being too rare, and melee weapons being a bit too weak. Afraid of Monsters Afraid of Monsters Director's Cut is a free Half-Life 1 mod. He plays David Leatherhoff, who is addicted to a strange drug. Lately, you've started to experience illusions and dark fears. So then you visit Markland Hospital seeking help, but all is not what it seems. The game's atmosphere and sound design is excellent, giving you the impression that something is there when it really isn't. The jump scares, puzzles, and alternate endings make Afraid of Monsters a mod that can be played again and again. Hotel 626 Hotel 626 wakes you up in the middle of the night and sends you tumbling down the dark rabbit hole of a haunted hotel. Hotel 626 plays like an interactive movie, but there are actual puzzles involved rather than choosing the path to next reel. Live action really adds something creepy to the game, unfortunately the game was removed. However, Hotel 626 held a few scares and fun puzzles if you dared to break the hallways.
System Shock 2. In this classic first-person adventure, players play a soldier suffering from amnesia that wakes up on a seemingly abandoned spaceship and makes a horrifying discovery. His crew transform into scary monsters called the Many, and a homicidal artificial intelligence called Shodan runs the show. With monsters running all over the place and Shodan feeding them lies or the truth, System Shock 2 creates a wonderful sense of dread. We cannot kill, we cannot kill each other without killing ourselves. Nightmare House 2 Nightmare House 2 is a free, horror-themed first-person shooting game, and a direct successor of the first classic horror map pack, Nightmare House. The story resumes with the player lost and confused in a hospital known as Never Lose Hope. With no understanding of how he came to be there, there's only a vague memory of the mysterious haunting girl from the original Nightmare House. Soon it will be difficult to determine between a dream and a reality. This mod uses clever scare tactics like that found in Fear, but with dark and dreary environments. If you're after a decent horror mod, this is a definite must. Cryo Fear. Players have already dubbed it as the best horror game mod ever. You play as Simon, the main protagonist, who is plagued with anxiety and depression. The game is set in a city called Faversholm, which is actually Stockholm in Sweden. Simon suffers from mental protection and has to fight the trauma inside his own head. Cry of Fear is soaked in loneliness, dread, foreboding, guilt, but it has shocking and disturbing, scary and loud moments embedded into it. It has a great atmosphere and a mix of jump scares, with simple unnervingness balanced in as well. You'll jump when something pops out but feel really tensed out the entire time whenever nothing really happening. Because you know something will happen at any given moment. Metro 2033 It's the moments in the game that successfully embrace the survival horror side with some keep the light on stumbling that feels similar to the better parts of Doom 3. That's not to say that this is strictly a monster closet scarefest, though as Metro features quite a few clever puzzles and stealth elements. It's also shockingly tense due to the overbearing darkness of the Metro and the fact that you have limited ammo. Sound is expertly used to convey the sense of overwhelming dread. The tunnels and the subway system provide an eerie echo. You may be all alone, armed with only a few rounds of ammo, and hear the monstrous howls from the approaching dark ones. But due to the echo effect, you may not know where they're coming from. If you play this at night, after everyone has gone to bed, and you don't have a few jump out of your seat moments, you're dead inside because there are times when this game is genuinely frightening. Stalker, Shadow of Chernobyl Stalker takes place in an area known as the Exclusion Zone, where a second, fictitious Chernobyl meltdown has caused the remaining wildlife to become horrible mutants. Furthermore, the disaster has led to valuable artifacts surfacing in the area for ambitious scavengers to recover and sell. The game's excellent use of real-world assets gives rise to realistic and highly detailed environments such as the abandoned amusement park at Pripyat. Along with the game's excellent ambient sound effects, Stalker's environments create an eerie atmosphere of desolation and loneliness. The Suffering There's nothing scarier than a haunted house, except for maybe a haunted prison. A prison in which very gruesome manners of the death penalty were administered. Such is the setting of the suffering, which puts an action spin on traditional survival horror. So you probably spend more time shooting at demons than solving puzzles, which is good. This is another game that really works on you psychologically and gives you a number of moral tests which determine whether you are an innocent man or a cold blooded murderer. The Thing. This game acts as a sequel to the 1982 film of the same name. An alien that can imitate other life forms has taken up residence in an Antarctic base and the player's team is sent to investigate. Since the alien can imitate any life form, the horror comes from not ever knowing if one of the player's teammates is actually the alien. Eternal Darkness Brilliance of Eternal Darkness wasn't in the storyline though. It was the way that the game played with the player's head. 
Every creature the player encountered drained sanity from the player. As their sanity decreased, the game's sound effects and music were gradually replaced by sinister voices whispering. Illusionary characters and rooms appeared on the screen and sometimes it seemed as if the game crashed or entire inventory had disappeared. It was extremely effective and very, very creepy. Nineteen sixteen, Darren Beck and Scream. This game is an indie game set in trenches of Germany, so everything that is found in this game contains letters that are from Germany. The actual art style of the game is great, giving the dark, grisly black and white setting in the post war environment. This game is set like a maze, but the player must navigate through all the while avoiding me mechanized dinosaurs who will chase the player down frantically. While there are weaponry and flares in the game, however, these don't provide much use to these enemies. It's always best to steer away from them rather than fighting them. Among the Sleep. Nothing can get scarier than witnessing horror from a toddler's perspective. Among the Sleep, an upcoming indie horror title, puts you in the role of a two-year-old and presents a never-before-seen survival horror experience. The game's scare levels is similar to games like Slender or Amnesia, but it's more frightening because it presents horror through the eyes of a helpless toddler whose only way to tackle it is to either run away or hide behind an object to avoid getting spotted by sinister enemies. The game's focus is on object interaction, which will help a toddler escape. You don't have any access to weapons, so there's a total survival horror game present. SCP-087-B SCP-087-B is a slightly odd-generated experiment in horror that will either have you jumping out of your seats or yawning dismissively. It really depends on you. SCP-087-B is a game set in randomly generated dark hallways with staircases, and something is lurking downstairs below you. And the only way you can go is deeper into the darkness. When you descend, each level is marked by a numbered plaque on the wall. Maybe it's the slow pace of the character, lack of music, and claustrophobic environment that makes this game unnerving. Wandering the seemingly abandoned Martian space station gives many players to creeps. Sure, you can guess when something bad's about to happen, and you'll be right most of the time. But that doesn't mean you won't think twice before entering every room. The music is virtually non-existent and relies on the dark ambient breathing found in every room. The monsters attack the player from dark corners and there are some great moments that you want to witness again and again. Every sound, every noise in this game will put you on edge. Doom 3 works to horror angle in a number of different ways and is pretty damn effective overall. Aliens vs Predator 2 the video game extension of two of the most famous science fiction movie franchises ever made offered players a choice of free gaming experiences. Playing as a marine was a completely different story. To stand any chance of survival, they were forced to embrace the knife-edged tension while listening out for any scuffling, clanks and scratching damned the game's many dark corridors. The beeping noise of the motion tracker could ratchet up the tension and increase the player's heartbeat in seconds. White Bay, a labyrinth named school. This game is one of the scariest games to ever exist. The developers actually had to release patches for the game to make it less scary, and put the more terrifying scares into the locked higher difficulties because people couldn't bring themselves to finish the game due to pure terror. Though its graphics aren't the best, that does not deter from its fantastic atmosphere and gameplay mechanics. The game allowed you to turn off lights to hide from unsuspecting enemies, while you were also avoiding ghosts and spirits. This game is for gamers who can take the outdated graphics, but want a fantastic atmosphere and can handle some puzzle solving, running, and hiding for your life against forces that you simply cannot beat. There's only one problem with this game. You technically need to simulate a Korean PC to play it, as it was only released there. However, there is a project called Unnamed GS that is working to restore this game and is actually, I think, almost done translations and updating it so you do not need a Korean PC. I've used his releases several times, played the game. 
I can't bring myself to beat it quite yet. It's absolutely terrifying and I can only take it in small chunks. Definitely worth checking out for any horror fan looking for a fresh scare. Call of Cthulhu. You'll be taking on the role of private detective Jack Walters, who has been given a job to find a missing person in the shadowy town of Innsmouth. An investigation that soon turns into an encounter with evil cultists, sea monsters, and several ancient horrors. The game's unusually bare interface helps to enhance its psychological horror elements. Your character's history of mental problems also helps blur the line between reality and fever dreams. Much like in Eternal Darkness and later games, you need to maintain your hero's sanity. Expose him to too much horror and he'll start to hallucinate, suffer from schizophrenia, and maybe even kill himself. Not only does this game feature terrifying creatures and atmosphere, as stated, it also lacks a heads-up display, meaning the player has no visual cues for things such as health, radar, and ammo. This surprisingly simple mechanic goes a long way in making players feel hopeless and isolated, unforgiving, and dark world. It truly brings H.P. Lovecraft's novel and stories and ideals to life. Dead Space series. Dead Space is a masterclass in sustained terror. Nearly every single aspect in E3's Hi-Fi Sora epic is engineered towards plunging the player into a sea of never-ending tension and leaving them there. The Wii version is an FPS on the rail shooter, and much of the jump scares and horror induced fun from the original are seen here too. It can be said that the Dead Space's fright techniques have been copied from every single sci-fi horror film ever made, but that doesn't stop the end result from being a glorious haul in its own right. The game's strongest scare factor is the enemy's necromorph, ability to jump to you from absolutely anywhere, be it above, below, or behind you. Condemned Criminal Origins Condemned follows the exploits of FBI agent Ethan Thomas on the trail of a serial killer. On the note of Thomas, he's actually hunting down a source of pure, unfiltered evil. Thomas's experience away from the safety of the Bureau seems filled with unfocused malevolence. From the attacks from gangs of psychotic homeless people to the atmospheric crime scenes. The Condemned features brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat, CSI crime investigations making the entire game genuinely unsetting. Factor in some tense exploration of dark and dreary abandoned buildings and altogether you have a really disturbing experience. Condemned 2 took much more than an action-packed view to the game, removing the scare factor found in the first installment. Fear series. The game's title says it all. Monolith's Fear series is considered by many as a modern-day horror first-person shooter. Why? Well, you'll certainly know why once you've played it. Players are thrown into a fast-paced FPS environment where supernatural elements, intense gunfights, and jump out of your seat moments arise. The clever use of lighting, sound, and shadows will leave players' minds and hearts racing and thinking things are there when really they aren't. The game demands players to always remain alert for who knows what is lurking around the next corner. While some may argue that the later Fear games somehow got less scary, the Perseus Mandate and Extraction Point really claimed the fame in terms of scariness and absolutely tension-filling and terrifying moments. SCP Containment Breach SCP Containment Breach is an indie game that somehow manages to be scarier than most recent big-budget horror games all combined. The game cast players as an unnamed character, a worker of the SCP Foundation, possibly a scientist, trapped inside a facility operated by the shadowy figures of the SCP Foundation. Much like Weeping Angels in Doctor Who and Slenderman Myth, the enemies will pursue you only when you're not looking at them. 
or when you blink. That's right, this game has an eye meter, which counts down the seconds between blinks. Leave it too long and you'll shut your eyes momentarily, allowing you to be pounced on and have your neck snap from your mind. Resident Evil series. While Resident Evil can't quite lay claim to being the first survival horror video game, it created the most effective horror experience of its day. By restricting view, players were left feeling completely vulnerable against the unholy beasts that were set against them. You can't say you didn't bolt from your chair when you saw those zombie dogs come crashing through the window of the police department. A scarcity of ammo only added to the tension you felt when surrounded by legions of the undead. Resident Evil 5 and 6 seem to go away from the whole horror perspective and lean more on action and quick time events, which led to many of the fans being quite outraged. Siren series. Siren is all about delivering a true to life feel of terror, which it does frighteningly well. It invented the sight jacket which allows players to see through the eyes of the monsters, and is often used in clever ways to solve puzzles and sneak past enemies. Much like any horror game, Siren also utilizes lighting and shadows to great effect, but it's the haunting groans and wails that will stick with gamers the longest, and ensure that the lights stay on every night after playing. Siren is a survival horror game where you, as a gamer, truly feel the need to survive. Silent Hill series. The Silent Hill games are undeniable classics in the survival horror genre. Like many of the titles on this list, Silent Hill has borrowed a lot of horror movie techniques, including angled camera shots, ominous sound effects, and shuffling, spasmodic movements, to highlight the otherworldliness of the game's horrific creatures. No other series does creepy, twisted, blood soaked horror better than Silent Hill. These games aren't stereotypical screamers. Instead, they rely on horrific images and things that work on the players mentally until they are so scared they're afraid to turn out the lights. Fatal Frame series. Fatal Frame gives the player a special camera rather than a gun, which is to use to dispatch the ghosts that haunt these games. Which is a nice change of pace for most horror games. The games tell of an ancient Japanese rituals and the legends that have a storytelling style similar to recent films like The Ring and The Grudge. The Fatal Frame games are well put together and wonderfully horrifying, even if the nightmares stay with you for weeks on end. Juan, The Grudge. Advertised as a horror house simulator, Juon takes a unique approach to the horror genre. You won't find any guns, bats, chainsaws, etc. or anything of the like. Just equipped with a flashlight as you attempt to flee a haunted local. Juon doesn't attempt to tell a story, it simply wants to scare you and then scare you again. And to that extent the game is certainly effective with no shortage of startling images and noises. The game uses lighting very effectively, as the flashlight can only illuminate so much of the screen. The flashlight also adds an element of suspense. If you run out of batteries, it's game over. The game also tracks on how well you cope with jump scares and such by giving you your overall result at the end of each stage. The game is based off the film The Grudge and the dual series of Japanese horror movies. Slender. This is it. The infamous Slender. It is a free indie horror game which has no weapons and no combat. It is based off of the Slenderman myth. The goal of the game is to find the eight pages scattered about the woods relating to the Slenderman. At any time he may appear, but with the more pages you pick up, the quicker Slenderman will hunt you down. It's a simple premise, but one that rapidly becomes increasingly intense and scary, and the fact that the Slenderman himself is so damn creepy, tall, thin, no face and tentacles, makes it even worse. 
The dim lighting and muted color palette tend to play tricks on your eyes until it seems like anything could be him. What's worse is that the music and ambience get progressively more and more intense, dark, and sinister every time you collect a new page. On an added note, you all should check out my Let's Play of that game if you haven't already. It recently broke the 100,000 view count, and it's quite a fun time. There's an annotation link in the corner for you all to enjoy. In Umbra series. In the game, the player traverses some truly dark, disgusting environments. The atmosphere is so doom and dread, it's almost real. Progress reports, diaries, letters, and wreckage all detail the downfall and insanity of the area. You will hear some odd sounds as you explore the complexes, and a lot of the sounds really mean something. There are monsters in the game, so this is not Half-Life or Doom 3. Games like that are good, but you always feel a bit safer when holding some serious firepower. Here you have to use your environment to save yourself. Perhaps you can quickly pile up some crates in front of a door to keep something evil at bay, or trap an enemy in a room by shutting the door. While you can hit monsters by swinging tools at them, it really isn't the best solution. Using new techniques, the Penumbra series pulls you into its dark web very effectively and will scare the hell out of you. Amnesia series. Amnesia is designed to frighten you from the straight outset, not just with wobbly camera work, but with some remarkably ghoulish enemies. There are no weapons at all. Amnesia sets the player on edge, so if you see something bad, you don't try and fight. You run. Each room, corridor, or chamber contains only a few sources of light. Most of them aren't illuminated. There's tinder boxes around, but not an enormous amount. You have a lamp, but the oil burns quickly, and is extremely scarce. In other words, light is a resource to be managed throughout. Without it, you will go slowly insane in the darkness. Hiding from an enemy is one of those moments where you truly feel like holding your breath, and your hands start sweating for fear that a single noise will give you away. There may have been follow-ups to the original Dark Descent, such as White Knight, but for now, the awful biting and crunching sound that seems to follow you oftentimes seems to be sticking with many players even after they've played, making this the original Dark Descent to be one of the scariest games on this list.